Hi everyone, Ashley here and welcome to another video on my YouTube channel. Today I'm sharing how to make this fun fall themed card using a nice ink blended background and a bunch of Lawn Fawn stamps and dies. Mostly their new Den Sweet Den stamp, which is all of those cute little bears, and then their Leafy Tree Backdrop die. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm starting by blending the background, and for this I used a combination of four Distress Oxide ink colors. I'm starting with this pale orange, which is dried marigold, and this will be closer to the bottom of the card. And I knew I was going to have a grassy hillside covering part of that panel, so I made that strip extra thick because I knew part of it was going to be covered by the grass. The next color is that pink, it's worn lipstick. Next is a red color, which is abandoned coral, and then finally I'm going to finish off with a purple, which is seedless preserves. And as you can see, I'm just blending sort of horizontally along the panel of cardstock. The cardstock that I'm using for this is Strathmore Bristol Smooth, which I really like for Distress Oxide ink blending because it is just a very smooth paper and it allows the inks to really blend together super, super nicely. I'm using some ink blending tools to blend those along and just sort of, like I said, going in horizontal stripes, going back and forth between the colors that I'm trying to blend. So for the purple, I'm going back and forth between the purple and the red until I get a nice blend. At first I wasn't quite happy with how much of the purple I put on and I wanted a bit more so I came back in with a little bit more of that ink and added a little bit more and again blended it back out between the red and the purple to really finish it off. Next I'm blending the grassy hillside and for this I'm using two colors of Distress Oxide ink. The first one is Cracked Pistachio which is that bright green and second will be Shabby Shutters which is more of a pale green. And I'm just blending these together to give a little bit of dimension to the hillside so it's not just one flat color, it's just two colors blended together, a light and a dark. Next, I took four panels, and these are just sort of scrap panels of that Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I'm blending each one with one color of Distress Oxide ink. So I'm using three of the colors that I already used on the card. There's the Dried Marigold is the orange, Shabby Shutters is the green, and Worn Lipstick is the pink, and I added Scattered Straw as the yellow. And the purpose of these panels will be to cut out a whole bunch of leaves from each one. So I'll have a whole bunch of orange leaves, a whole bunch of green, a whole bunch of pink, and a whole bunch of yellow leaves. So I just blended simply the cut one color per panel and just flat blended onto it. Just really applied that ink onto those panels. Next, I knew I wanted the leaves that I'm going to cut out of these panels to have a little bit of shimmer. So I took a copper watercolor paint pot added a bit of water, mixed it all up with a paintbrush, put it onto an acrylic block, and now I'm splattering it out onto those panels. And this just creates this really pretty metallic splatter. Okay, so it's time to make up some of the rest of the pieces of the card. I took the Lawn Fawn Leafy Tree Backdrop die in Landscape, and I cut it out of some wood green cardstock. I also cut the grassy hill with a hillside border die to make that nice sloping edge. I then added a bit of liquid glue and glued that grass onto the back of the tree backdrop. Next, I'm gonna add my sky background. So again, I'm just adding some liquid glue to the back of that tree backdrop, and then I can stick the whole thing down onto my blended sky exactly where I wanted it. So I really wanted to make sure that some of that orange was peeking through. So I made sure to stick it down so that you could see some of that orange, and then any excess I just trimmed off with my scissors. And this is behind that leafy tree backdrop border, so you don't even really see it. It doesn't matter if your cutting is a little bit off, um, it'll be hidden anyway. Okay, so that is the main part of the card's background done. Next, I'm gonna move on to coloring these adorable images. Um, and I'm gonna speed up the coloring here like I've sped up most of the video. And I'll talk you through my coloring process, but if you don't like watching coloring and you wanna just see the rest of the card come together, definitely feel free to skip ahead in the video. So I stamped out these images using my favorite things, Extreme Black Ink, which is my current favorite black ink for Copic coloring. I really love it because I find that it doesn't bleed like some other inks that I have tend to do with Copic markers. Um, I find this one doesn't, and it just stamps really nicely. I usually double stamp it. The first time, it doesn't usually stamp perfectly unless the ink pad is like completely brand new. So I use my mini Misty tool, to, which is just a stamp positioner, to make sure that I stamp everything out twice. And after stamping it out twice, I tend to get a perfectly clean and solid black image with this ink. So like I mentioned, these images are from Lawn Fawn's Den Sweet Den, which is where all those cute little bears come from. I also used um, a few images from another one of their recently released fall stamp sets, which is called Let's Go Nuts. And that's where that wagon and that little rake and a few of the squirrels come from. 
You'll see at the end of the card video that I don't actually end up using all of these images, which is fine. I tend to stamp out more images than I actually need and color them in. And then at the end of the day, if I don't use them on the card, I'll save them for another card. So it's all good. So for these bears, I'm just using a couple shades of brown, actually three shades for these ones. Um, the darkest shade is E35, and the middle shade is E31. And then for a super light shade, I believe I went with E00. And that just adds a nice highlight. Um, sometimes I just use two shades, sometimes I use three. It really just depends on which kind of colors I'm going for and which markers I have, as well as the size of the image, because if the image is very, very small, then I find that often there's not enough space for three colors, and I'll just use two. What I do tend to do either way, whether I'm using three or two colors for blending, is I will always go back at the end of the blending and um, add an extra layer of dark. And you can see I'm doing that now with the squirrel. And basically what that does is it um, just it adds an extra layer of dimension, um, even above and beyond the three layers. Because what I do find is that once you start blending out that dark shade with the medium, it kind of loses some of its edge, uh, so to speak, and the really dark, kind of depths of it get a little bit lost. So what I like to do is just come back in with one more layer of that dark shade and really add that depth back and add sort of that darkness back that got a little bit lost in the first blend. So you can see I followed that process with those squirrels. And next I'm moving on to the little wagon which I decided to color um, sort of a similar yellow color to the scattered straw that I used to blend out the leaves because I wanted it to be kind of matching. And with the tires, I just colored them a couple different shades of gray to add a little bit of dimension to them. Finishing off by coloring in that little rake as well as the little mug, which again, I wanted it to match with the leaves, so I colored it in um, some light orange shades to match with that dried marigold Distress Oxide ink color and filled in that liquid part with some brown to indicate maybe they're drinking some hot chocolate, which I love to drink in the fall as well. For this sentiment, I had a big word die cut, thanks, cut out of copper, card, of copper cardstock, which you'll see in a few moments. And to go with it, I stamped out grateful for you, also in copper embossing powder, which I'm just melting with my heat tool now. I'm gonna let that dry for a few moments and come back to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna cut around the arms of that little bear, um, and that's because he's gonna be holding on to that mug of hot chocolate, and I wanted some space in between his arms uh, to place it. I believe if you have the coordinating dies for the stamp set, there is a die that will do this work for you, but I don't have them. So I'm just cutting around his arms with my X-Acto knife. And this achieves the same thing. Luckily for me, I'm working on a cutting mat, so um, that X-Acto knife doesn't hurt anything beneath. And once I've cut around his little arms, I can just sort of scooch in that little mug and place it where I want it to be. And there you go, you have his little arms holding the mug. Now coming back to this embossed sentiment, I wanted the background to be yellow to match that scattered straw of the leaves. So I'm just taking my scattered straw ink and blending over that embossing, embossed sentiment with the scattered straw. I cut that sentiment into a little sentiment banner and as you can see now I've sort of aligned most of my images on the card where I kind of want them to be, um, but I haven't glued anything down yet. I'm starting by taping down some of the leaves onto that little tree. Um, because as you can see, the dye itself just sort of cuts out the tree branches and then these leaves are cut separately. So off camera, I did go ahead and cut out a whole bunch of leaves um, from each of those colored panels that I had inked up before. And these leaf dyes do come in the same set. So that leafy tree backdrop dye has the backdrop sort of frame with the tree branches as well as a few different types of leaves to cut out. It also comes with sort of a big oval image that's meant to go behind the tree if you wanted sort of more of a cartoony looking um, full tree look. But for this I just cut out the individual leaves again, just cutting them out of my individually inked up colored panels so that I get a whole bunch of different colors of leaves. And I decided to kind of go with pastel fall theme, so that's why I chose the sort of pastel-y colors. So I just used some tape runner to tape a bunch of those down onto the tree to make the tree a little bit more filled. And now I'm just gluing down that thanks sentiment. And as I mentioned, that's just a die cut word that I die cut out of some copper foil cardstock, so it's nice and shiny. And I really like how there's a lot of copper touches on this card. I think it's very fall themed and I like how they all match. So we have the copper thanks, we have the copper embossed grateful for you. And then of course there was that copper splatter onto those leaves. So there's a lot of copper kind of running through this card. 
I'm just adding some foam squares to the back of all the images and again just sort of laying them out where I want them. And then I knew that I wanted a big pile of leaves sort of running along the bottom of the card. So I'm just laying a whole bunch out, kind of trying to alternate colors and shapes as I go along. And I'm using my craft tweezers to help me achieve this because with those it's just easy to get very perfect placement of your objects on the card as you go along. Once I kind of decided where I wanted all those little bears to be, I can also come in and release the release paper from the foam squares and stick those down onto the card as well. So one by one I'm just going through and gluing these leaves down to the bottom and I'm just filling out the whole bottom of the card with more and more leaves. Um, one by one just sort of adding them in and then gluing them down. I'm using my liquid glue for this. Um, you could use tape runner too. I just tend to prefer my liquid glue um, because I like to sort of be able to reposition things a little bit here and there if I need to and liquid glue takes a, a, a couple seconds to dry so it gives you that wiggle room. So I've skipped ahead now and you can see that I have filled in the bottom of the card with a whole bunch of leaves. Again just kind of alternating color and shape to add a little bit of variety here. And that is the main part of the card done. To finish it off, I just added a few copper, or rose gold I guess, technically they're rose gold but they look very coppery, uh, sequins around the scene and that is the card complete. So there it is, that is the scene. I really love how the different colors of leaves sort of make it very vibrant and bright and that sky is also very vi vibrant and bright as well so I really love the colors and how they turned out in this card. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something about card making that maybe you can try as well. If you want to see more of my videos, definitely subscribe to my channel and head over to my Instagram account where there are a lot more cards posted as well. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!